Hello and welcome back to my channel here. Um, you might know me as Kicks Codes on Instagram. Uh, and if you don't, then check out my Instagram account. Um, and what I'm doing is basically studying AI in medicine. And I talked a lot with you guys on Instagram and you wanted me to do more tutorials. So I was thinking of doing some filtering and image processing in this uh, tutorial videos. And I will start with the very basic and then uh, a video after another, I will just go to more advanced filters and more advanced image processing. And there will be a little bit of medical imaging as well, uh, because you guys have asked about that. But just like, let's go down to basic now. So, um, what is an image even? So, an image is a big matrix with a lot of numbers, basically. And uh, we're going to work with black and white images. So, it's just going to be in two dimensions. So, x-axis and a y-axis, basically, with numbers in all the grids. And when you use a filter, you basically want to have a new output of all the pixels, like new values of the pixels. So you want to sometimes preserve the whole uh, size of the image just with new values. So what can we do with image filtering? We can make it smoother, for example, and why do we want to do that? If you have a very uh, like pixely picture like this, you want to make it nicer, maybe. Uh, so we can add some blur into it, so it seems a little bit less grainy. Another thing we can do is maybe uh, try to fix an image, like take away ugly lines or something that has uh, broke the image and fix it again. And um, maybe we want to do segmentation later on, so we want to know where all the edges are. So we want to take a picture and we want to show where are the edges in the image, for example. So all of this is done uh, by having something called a kernel that you kind of like swipe over the image and calculate a new output that you put in a new image. And a kernel is basically a little matrix, as you can see here. They are in different kind of sizes. They can be a big matrix. It can be a small matrix, for example. Uh, it might just be a little vector like this. Um, so what do you do with this one? In all of these holes, there's actually not holes in, in, in a normal one. Uh, instead, there's like small little operations in here. So it can, for example, be a kernel here with has twos everywhere, for example. And that would mean that you multiply each pixel with the number two. So you actually like amplify it, for example. What you do is that you put the kernel over the, pi the pixel you want to calculate here. And then you look at the neighboring pixels around it. So no pixel is a lonely island. So everything in the pi picture here cor is basically correlating a little bit with the pixel around it. And that is what we want to catch. So if we would put this on a picture, let's say that this is our picture here. We put down the kernel on the first pixel we would like to calculate. And as you can see, then the kernel gets out of the borders of the picture. And there's different um, methods that you can use to avoid this issue. It is when you can pad the outer with zeros, for example. So you can put like zero, 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 like make new row here up and you make a new column on the left and right side and a new row on the bottom. So you make the picture a little bit bigger, uh, padded with zeros, but then you can swoop the kernel all over the image without getting any errors. 
Another thing you can do is basically take the last row and just copy it down. The first row and copy it down and the first and last um, column and just add it down on the sides as well. So the whole picture will be a little bit bigger. Uh, you can go with the kernel on all the different frames. The kernel has a lot of different multiplications here or additions or divisions. Uh, some kind of um, operation that you want to have on the image. I'm going to show you uh, three examples today, so I hope you get the idea of it. Uh, one is a kernel which has a mean function, so it basically adds all the picture pixels around you and yourself, and then divide on the number of pixels that you take into account. So here it divides on uh, 9, for example. And so this is a mean filter because you take the mean of all the pixels around you. Then we have a little, um, I don't have it printed out, but let's use this again. Um, it captures all the pixels around you and yourself, and then it takes the median number of the pixel values. So this is a median filter. So if we would have uh, only ones here, then the, me the median is number one here and you put a one there, for example. Um, and the last filter I will show you today is called uh, a Gaussian filter. I don't know if you remember uh, the Gaussian curve, how it looks like. It basically looks like a little bell curve, like this. Um, so let's say that this is the pixel values. Uh, so what we do is basically make a kernel that uh, makes this kind of computation. So we can have one that is a little bit lower, for example, which means that it will cut off this top. So it will cut out all the high frequencies in the image, for example. And you can make this kernel very big, uh, very broad, uh, so it takes more pixels into account. For example, you could have a 9 times 9 matrix. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, but you can definitely see it uh, here. That it takes like um, different pixels have different weights. So the pixel that is closest to you, like you, has the biggest uh, amount of weight, number four here. And the pixels closest to you will have a big weight, but not as big as the one you have. And the further away you are from you, the lower uh, the weight is. For example, at a 9 times 9 matrix, you can also have really high weight, you can have 100 on you, 90 around you, 80, 70, 60, for example. Uh, the kernel can really look very, very different. Um, so all of these um, filters that I'm going to show now, all of these three, median, mean and Gaussian, they are used for blurring the picture, for like smoothing it out. I'm just going to show you <clears throat> two filters that I will show you in the next video, just so you know where we're heading at. And this filter is called the Sobel filter. Um, so the Sobel filter actually uh, detects edges. And this one uh, will detect a, a vertical edge, for example. And then you can do the same but have minus uh, 1, minus 2, uh, minus 1, 0, and then 1, 2, 1. And that will then detect the uh, vertical ones, or horizontal ones, I'm sorry. You can also have these kind of vectors, which actually um, only looks at the uh, vertical lines, and you can have um, a little vector like this that only looks at the horizontal lines. So we will look at edge detection 
uh, next video. And now we're gonna look at the blurring because blurring um, is one step that you usually do as a pre-process before you find the edges. So this is something we have to know. Okay, just to give you a little more hands-on, um, I'm going to show you how you actually uh, calculate uh, with the different kind of kernels. If that was not clear, I hope it will be clear now. So let's start with the mean one. So you take uh, the first pixel, we're going to pad out uh, the new values um, with the existing row and the existing columns, so we're just going to pad out them on the sides. Um, I usually do that because I don't like uh, multiplying uh, with a zero, because especially if we're going to divide them later. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So we put our first pixel here in the middle of the kernel. So what we basically do now uh, is um, taking 10, 10, 12, 10, 10, 12, 12, 12, 13, adding that up, dividing on 9, and that will be our new pixel value. So it's actually uh, 10, it's, it's going to be like 10.3 or something, but just like, let's say 10. Then we move the kernel to the right, and the new pixel we will look at uh, is in the second column and the first row. And we padded out the numbers here as well. So, um, let's see. So we just add 10, 12, 11, 10, 12, 11, 12, 13, 10, divide by 9. That's our new pixel value right here. Okay? So we basically do that all over the picture. Uh, I was a bit lazy, so I just did um, five columns and two rows, just for you to get an idea of how to calculate this. And now, let's uh, do a median filtering as well. So you put the kernel again in the middle here, on the pixel we want to calculate. So the first row and the first column. Still number 10. But now we don't really add them up. We're just going to see which one is the median number of all of these nine pixel values that we have. Okay? And the median of all of these values is 12. So in our new picture we're going to add 12 in the first row and in the first column on that picture. Then we swipe it a little bit to the right, so it's, we're on the second column and still on the first row. And we have number 12 here. So, let's see of all of these nine pixel values, what is the median? It will be number 11, so we add number 11 there. And then we swipe it, we will see here, uh, 50, 150, 140, 11, 11, 10, 13, 12, 12. What's the median value here? It is number 12. Then we go one step more, and now the median value is 150. If we put it number here, and we're gonna get 190 as the median value. And then we do the same here. I also just did the two rows, uh, one, two, three, four, fifth column, uh, but this is what you do on the whole picture. And what I would like to show you now, if we compare median one, and this is the mean one, if we look at the pixel values, you see here that it goes from 10, 11, 50, 116, 180, almost. Here it goes from 12, 11, 12, and then it jumps to 150 and 190. What this actually means is that the median one preserves edges better. So when there is a sharp uh, change in pixel values, it's going to preserve that. In the mean one, it's going to blur out the lines a little bit. So you won't really see a sharp change in the pixels. It would rather gradiently go up 280. So that is like two different uh, filters which both blurs, but one preserves edges and one doesn't. 
So for example, if we would like to have an edge detection and we see that, okay, there's so much noise in this image, a lot of like small lines that we don't really care about of finding, then we would blur it with a mean filter first because that would blur out all the sharp, small edges that we see. And if there's a big change, it's still gonna preserve that. And here in the medium one, maybe we actually want to amplify the edges. Then we would use the medium filter. So I hope that makes it a little bit more clear. And you will also be able to test this out on different images on the uh, Jupyter notebook that I posted on GitHub. And the link is here below, by the way, so you can check that out. And okay, so the last little filter that we're gonna go through now is the Gaussian one. So the idea is basically the same, that we go through all of the pixel values, but this time it's a little bit uh, longer to, cal um, to calculate. You don't see that uh, always um, that quickly. So what you do is you take 10 times one, 10 times 2 plus 12 times 1 plus 10 times 2 plus 10 times 4 plus 12 times 2 plus 12 times 1 plus 12 times 2 plus 13 times 1. You sum that up, then you divide on 16, and that is your new little number that you put in the same position but in the new image. Then you do that for all the pixel values. I also just did it a little bit here to give you an example. Um, as you can see, it is also smoothing a lot. If we would have a, a bigger weight, for example, it would look a little bit different. If we would have a bigger matrix, it would smooth it even more, so it would be more like gradiently smoothing. So there's not always like, the best filter to use. It really depends on what you want to do and how your original image look, what you want to amplify, how much you want to smooth out, for example, um, and if you want to preserve the edges. So uh, these are the three filters uh, that we use a lot in pre-processing, uh, really common. And I hope you understand now how they work and I hope you also check out the notebook I have on GitHub so we can play around a little bit, especially with the, with the Gaussian one, like try to make it uh, bigger and smaller and the same with the mean filter, you can have them uh, bigger or smaller and see the difference when it's grainy or when the picture is more smooth. Uh, okay, so thank you so much for listening, give me a thumbs up if you liked this and don't forget to subscribe down here below so you don't miss when I go through more filters and more advanced image processing tools. Um, so if this was too basic for you, definitely subscribe so that fun videos will come to you. And if this was new for you, then you definitely have to subscribe so you stay in pace and learn a lot about image processing. Thank you so much, guys. See you on Kicks Codes on Instagram.